Hi everyone, and this is Dr. Nelly. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a strategy which uh, I call the T-chart, but you probably have seen this in uh, other uh, applications for learning math uh, or the sciences, which is called the divided page. But let me explain how uh, this works, okay? So the method is very simple. You're going to have a problem in front of you. And what you're going to do is, in your scratch paper, you're going to divide it into two sides. You know, you have two columns. On one side, you'll be doing the actual work. Now, if this is a very simple problem, you don't have any, you know, you don't have any complication in solving that problem, then you just work through the problem. Now, this technique becomes very useful when you actually have difficulty with the problem, with approaching the problem, getting stuck somewhere. What you want to do is you're going to work through your um, problem as you uh, would do regularly but while you're working through that uh, problem you're gonna write down exactly what you're thinking about um, and how you're feeling in terms of the problem when you're uh, working through that particular part of the problem okay and I'll give you some examples of this in a, in a real case setting um, in a second but what is the goal of this t-chart method the goal is fairly simple there's several things that are useful when you write down um, your exact thought, thought process when you're solving a problem. The first is that we have seen quite often, uh, in fact there's been research done on this, that if you uh, write something down on paper, uh, a lot of times your brain, when it sees that things, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, complexity or the difficulty with the problem, the confusion written down on paper, a lot of times your brain would then see that you need to look at the problem in a new light or a different way and a lot of times just writing the exact thought process down will help you think through that problem in a different way the second uh, important uh, use that you get out of writing down your um, e exact thought process is it allows you to articulate or to specify exactly which step of this problem that you're having difficulty with okay now this is very useful uh, in terms of uh, how you can approach your instructor because once you have this uh, specific steps what you can do is you just take this piece of paper right with the thought process and just bring it to your instructor and say look I worked through this part and I'm stuck right here and I tell you uh, as an instructor one of the frustrations I have is asking students exactly what their problem is with a particular example and they can't really tell me which step. They would say, well, the whole thing is complicated, uh, I don't really know where to start, and that type of stuff. So those are very general. You want to say exactly that, okay, you know, I was doing this problem and at this particular step, I can't go further. That's how it's going to be helpful for me, for the instructor. Now, the benefit is if you can specify your problem, then you know which part of your um, knowledge is currently weak, okay? This is sort of like saying, let's say you're shooting basketball. If you can pinpoint exactly which part of your motion is incorrect, then somebody can come in and correct that for you, the coach or some other trainer perhaps. That's my responsibility. That's the instructor's responsibility. So when I see that, that you're weak on this part, I can give you more practice on that area. I can help you with that area more, present the uh, information in a different way. So that's the benefit of this. But unless you can give me specific, you know, uh, component that's missing from your knowledge, I can't really help you. Okay. All right. So let, let's let me go through this example really quickly because it's going to show you exactly you know how what I'm looking for when you're doing this t-chart method so here's an example problem it says that you just purchase a container you can that you can use to store some textbooks the textbooks all have uniform sizes of these dimensions right the box itself has a volume of 40 US quart question is how many books can you store inside the box okay so what I'm going to do is show you some example of answers that I got when I assigned this question to four different people okay this four people let me just give you the background I'll talk about the background in a second for each one of them as I'm going through their responses okay but this is the question you can try this yourself if, if you're at home 
you can try to look at this problem and start going through this exercise and thinking about what am I going to write here and if this is a breeze for you if this is like really easy this problem then you don't need to do anything but if you're stuck you try it the first time and you don't get the answer right away you're stuck somewhere then start to go through this exercise start to write down exactly what you're thinking when you're trying to solve that problem what process did you go through and so on okay let me go through the examples of the people that I asked to to do this problem um, okay so this is student one actually uh, this student had had very little math background okay so she was just stuck she just put out this uh, thought process right here it says this is so hard bunch of exclamation points I'm looking the answer up on Google which was a failure I can't do any of this okay this most often a lot of times if you're very weak in chemistry this is probably one of the first things that I'll you know I see very often people will just say it's so hard I don't know what to do I can't do any of these things okay this is um, the first step in realizing that you're having difficulty with this but this is also very um, it's not very useful it's not very productive to have this type of uh, uh, thought process because what happens here is basically you're just giving up okay you're saying I can't do it I'm just gonna shut off my brain at this point that's not the way to do it you wanna start to think about is there anything in my notes is there anything on Google on the internet that can help me solve this problem what is the problem giving me that will help me you know that what what information is given to me that I can help me move on um, from this step where you have nothing written on this part okay now somebody on the second uh, type uh, student number two could be giving one of these uh, answers right here or one of these thought process right here so I'm just gonna write you know read it out for you the person could be saying is there some kind of equation I'm supposed to use with this problem that's a very common approach and that's not bad because then you're starting to think about something that might have you might have learned that you might be able to use in this case the second question might be you look at this problem and you say well there's three numbers here am I supposed to multiply these numbers together am I supposed to add them together okay but regardless of what you're thinking about you're starting to think about something associated with using the numbers and getting you somewhere with it and then if you look at the problem again you can see that there are different unit systems okay so maybe uh, you have to take one unit and convert it to the other unit or vice versa okay that's another thought there okay so that's um, student number two I'm gonna give you now the exact uh, the actual example of somebody who went through this so let me write this uh, let me show this for you so this is somebody who actually did this problem this per person had some math background know a little bit about volume and uh, units uh, maybe a little bit more about volume so you see what she wrote down here is she said I don't know but then later on she said well once she wrote this down she started thinking she said well I know volume is base times width times height and then she said which is height which is base which is width so she's trying to wonder which numbers correspond to all of these num uh, uh, quantities and then she said these numbers are it so then she multiplied these numbers together okay to get a number at the bottom and she said I don't know at that point she's stuck too hard okay but that's a typical response as well right so you're, you're starting to get somewhere but now see you see when I have a student that looks like this I know better I know that they understand the idea that volume is somehow related to this problem you have to calculate the volume and you have to calculate the volume by multiplying these three dimensions together let's go to the next one okay so let's see this person write quite a bit of stuff right so what he said here is first off he said I'm much more comfortable making word usage suggestions not gifted in math did bare minimum in college so this uh, student by the way was actually uh, about a 50 year old uh, man who's uh, had a career in uh, the film business He's taking chemistry to try to um, change career and you s see that he's just kind of working this through he didn't really have a very strong math background but he said that problem seems to have two parts convert to quartz or convert 40 quarts to cubic inches likewise this centimeter measurement has to be converted somehow and then she he said at the bottom here in real life I would have asked my wife to check my work 
Okay, so she, he's not very confident, but he had some thought about what to do with this problem. So let's go through this uh, person's work here. So he actually said, I googled 40 quarts to cubic inches and get answered. So he was just using Google to basically convert 40 quarts to cubic inches. And then he said, I must somehow need to convert centimeters to inches. And he did that. But remember, you have to multiply to get, to, uh, to get cubic inches. So he did it and he got cubic inches. And then he used a little calculator to figure out that he needs 20 box, uh, 20 books in the box. Okay. Now this part of it is not very clear. It wasn't clear how exactly he got this 20 books from the numbers that he had here, but he should have written that out here in his explanation. Okay. So this is the last student. Uh, again, a professional um, person who's not in the sciences. She, she works in education um, and has not had math for a long time okay although she re does a certain amount of math you know a small amount of math as part of her job but she's not involved directly with math all the time or chemistry so she said here I'm not sure I have enough information to solve the problem I know the container has a volume of 40 quarts but I don't know the box dimension so she's worried about what exactly is the size of this box she said that if the box is too narrow for example the books may not fit unless I grind them up. That's a really uh, thoughtful response. So she actually thought about the situation and think about, well, I have a box and I have a bunch of books, but if the box is, you know, has a particular volume, but it's a very, very narrow box, the books might not fit. So the question is not good. Okay. So she actually uh, first thought about the question. She thought about the question being unclear. But then she said, well, I'll solve as much as I can. Maybe the answer will become clearer during the process. So she said, I think the formula for volume is length times width times height, but not sure. So we'll check on the internet. And she went ahead and checked it and figured out that that was the answer. So she did the calculation here and got the answer in cubic centimeter. And then she, you notice that in the next step, she said, I don't know how to convert cubic centimeters to quartz. I'll find internet, uh, the Czech internet for an equivalency. Now what she meant here is a conversion factor, but as I said before, she's not somebody who uh, are, is, uh, you know, uh, involved in chemistry, so she not, doesn't know the appropriate term, but she was thinking here clearly, and then she found that one cubic centimeter is equal to this many quarts, so she converted the cubic centimeter to quarts, okay? Then she said information showed different conversion for fluid versus dry quart. Uh, so I used the dry measurement. So she's saying here that it turns out that when she went to the internet, there's two different types of quartz. There's the fluid quartz, there's the dry quartz. So she felt that she's not sure which one the, she should use for the question, but she thought she'll just pick one, which is dry. And so she took that number of quartz divided by the 1669 that she got earlier for the dry quartz and found 23.966. Uh, so she said at the end she used a division and calculator to figure out how many textbooks with a volume of 1.669 dry quarts that will fit into a 40 quart box. And so she divided these numbers, got 20, about 24, so then based on the volume, not the dimension, you can fit about 23 textbooks into this uh, box. Okay. So this person really thought through that process, and you can see how she was thinking through. And these are, by the way, real cases. I'm not making this up. These are uh, I ask people to, you know, give me examples, and I purposely ask people with, you know, not a lot of math background, so you can see how people can, you know, get to the answer if they're, uh, they are, uh, you know, willing to write down their thoughts, because at some point you start to think through problems when you write things down, and not only that, I can better help you if I know which step it is you have uh, a mistake in. So again, going back here, I really want you to incorporate this again. If you are having problems, okay, if you, if the problem, if the example I put out, you know, homework problem, you don't get any, you don't have an issue with it, then don't, no need to do this because this is extra work. But if you think that you might have, you know, difficulties in many different problems, then start doing this and I guarantee you it will help you and it will help me help you as well.